Hi friends, welcome to Wisdom Academy YouTube channel. I am Nilesh and today we are going to see physics of 12th standard CBSC. Right, so today we are going to start uh, the first chapter of physics that is electric field and charges. Electric field and charges is a part of electrostatics. So electrostatics comprise of two things which are going to be I mean told in 12th standard. One thing is electric field and charges. Another thing is electric potential and capacitance which will be the second chapter of your uh, 12th physics. So today we are going to see what is electric field and charge. So when I say charge, where the charge comes from? Charge comes from atom. If I remember, you would have learned atom in your junior classes. Like you would have learned what is the atom and what is the structure of atom. If I redraw it once again for you, then atom is consisting of a nucleus where there is a positive charge. And around the nucleus, we have shells where we have electrons. So if you remember your childhood, you would have, they would have told you in the school itself that protons, they carry positive charge. Electrons, they carry negative charge. So when I'm talking about the charges, this is where the charges come from. Charges come from the electrons and protons which are present inside an atom. Now, these charges can be in two conditions. Either they can be in rest or they can be in motion. If the charges are in rest, if the charges are in rest, that means they are not moving, then that branch of physics is known as electrostatics. The charges should be in rest. When the charges are at rest, then they produce electric field, which you will be learning in this chapter. Same charges, when they start moving, that means charges are in motion, there are two conditions possible. That they are moving in a uniform motion or they are moving in a non-uniform motion. If they are moving in a uniform motion, I mean to say that acceleration is equal to zero. In that case, they will produce electric field and also they will produce magnetic field. So in addition to electric field, the charges also will produce magnetic field. But if they are in non-uniform motion, that is acceleration is not equal to zero, then electric field, magnetic field, in addition to these two, they will also be electromagnetic waves. So about the charges in motion, we will study in the third chapter of this subject. About electromagnetic waves, we will study in the later part of the subject. So after knowing about charges, what things they produce when they are in rest and how what are the fields they produce when they come to motion will come to the next part of this chapter so in the beginning if you see the book they will be talking about conductors insulators semiconductors and i hope you are aware about that that water conductors which will allow the charges to flow through them insulators which won't allow the charge to flow through them and semiconductors which will allow the charges to partially flow through them under certain certain conditions there are one more category of uh, classification called as superconductors that also will come to know in the next chapter fine so now we will know the first thing that is the basic property of charges. Basic properties of charges. So basically there are three properties. First one is additive nature. The next one is quantization. And a third one is conservation. So the basic properties of charges are additive nature of charge, also called as additivity, quantization of charge and conservation of charge. Let us see this one by one. So what is additive nature of charge? It says that on a particular object or on a particular surface, if there are n number of charges present, then the total net charge on the body will be the algebraic addition of all these charges. That means, for example, on a body, if I have plus 5q, plus 3q, minus 2q, minus 4q charges present, then the net charge on this body will be equal to the algebraic addition of all these things. In a sense, plus 5q, plus 3q, minus 4q, and minus 2q, which will give you plus 2q. So a body which has plus 5q, plus 3q, minus 4q and minus 2q charges on its surface, 
has a net charge of plus 2 q this is added to nature of charge then let us talk about quantization quantization means that the the total charge carried by a particular uh, surface is the integral multiple of the charge carried by each particle i'll explain this in detail so you should know first that one electron or one proton carry a charge of plus or minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb which means if one coulomb of one electron is present that has a charge of minus 1.6 into minus 19 coulomb and if there is one proton present it has a charge of plus 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb if we have more than one charge suppose i have five charges so what is the total charge it will be 5 into charge of one particle so suppose if i have five electrons then i will say 5 into charge of one electron so it will be equal to 5 into 1.6 into the power minus 19 coulomb and that gives us uh, it will give us 8 8 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so the formula of quantization is written mathematically as q is equal to n e q is equal to n e means the charge on a surface is n is the integer now some of you may think why i am saying it to be integer why can't it be a fraction see like suppose if you see this building and we have five floors i will not say that this building has three and a half floors or four and a half floors even if one floor is small or bigger than the other floor i will say this building has five floors same way charges we will never say it has one and a half charge two and a half charge three and a half charge rather we say it is a integer it is a whole number so we must write this n as 1e 2e 3e at any 100 but we should not write 100.5e and based upon this there are some questions possible where they will give you certain amount of charge and they ask you whether it is possible or not you want to say for example if the question is given 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is this charge possible or not this question comes in any examination then you can examine it how you can examine it this is the value of q given so i know the formula q is equal to n e q is given as 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 is equal to n and e we know 1.6 into the power minus 19 so when i find the value of n it would come to be this will get cancelled this will become 2 so it will come to be n is equal to 2 and i said you n is an integer 2 being an integer it is possible but when the question is whether q is equal to suppose if i write this as 2.2 whether q is equal to 2.2 in the number minus 19 coulomb is possible or not then what would be the answer well, what i will do i will change q by 2.2 here and then let me check what answer i am getting so now i will get something like n is equal to 2.2 by 1.6 if i further simplify it i will be getting 11 by 8 11 by 8 is a fraction which is not a discrete integral number so i will say this charge is not possible so this kind of questions can be explained in the examination where they will give a certain charge to you and they'll ask whether it is possible or not right so now we'll see about conservation of charge so we already saw what is additive nature we saw what is quantization now we'll go to what is conservation of charge conservation of energy conservation of mass you have studied in your junior classes same way conservation of charge says that charge cannot be created charge cannot be destroyed it will always remain constant for a system what i mean to say if there is a body and there is a second body they both are neutral in nature when i say a body is neutral i mean to say that the number of electrons is equal to number of protons so both bodies are neutral that means in both the cases number of electrons and number of protons are equal to each other now let me assume that from here two electrons are coming and going to this so from here two electrons lost and from here two electron gained so the charge got transferred by any means it can be by conduction or induction or anything but now what has happened two electrons from body one has gone to 
body 2. When two electrons have come out of body 1, it creates a net positive charge on this. So this body will have plus 2 charge because two electrons have left it. It has a deficiency of electron. Here there is an excess of electron and these electron will produce minus 2 charge. So if you see here also 2 and here also 2. So the net charge even if the charge is transferred if I say as a whole the charge remains conserved because plus 2 minus 2 becomes again 0. So the net charge on the complete system remains conserved. This is the meaning of conservation of charges. Some of you might be thinking why did I say about electrons moving? Why not protons moving? Can protons move? Yeah, protons can also move. But why we don't ever talk about protons moving? We always talk about electrons move from here to there, but we never talk about our protons moving. The reason for that is, again, if we look at the structure of atom, the protons are present inside the nucleus, whereas electrons are in the shells. Electrons being free, they can come out with less efforts. But protons being inside the nucleus are binded by nuclear energy very tightly, which will not let this positive charge come out of the nucleus so easily. I'm not saying it cannot come. It can come. But we need to supply a lot of energy. So the amount of energy you will need to supply to take out the proton, for that it is very easy to take out the electron itself. That's why we generally don't talk about protons coming out of the nucleus but don't think it is not possible it is possible so even the protons when they start moving they can produce current the same way like how electrons movement can produce current the difference is electrons movement will produce current in the opposite direction whereas the current produced by proton will be in the same direction you will learn about this in detail when you go to current electricity but don't always think that since i am telling electron coming out protons cannot protons can come with an I mean, uh, taking off a lot of energy, which we generally we don't do. So in today's lecture, what we saw, we learned uh, what is electrostatics. We learned what fields are created when the charges are at rest and when they are in motion. We learned that charges being at rest creates only electric field. Charges in motion, if it is uniform, creates electric field and magnetic field. If it is non-uniform, creates electric field, magnetic field and electromagnetic waves. We also learned what are the basic properties of charges and I said you about the additive nature, quantization and conservation of charge. Remember that it is very important for the school examinations. Fine. In the coming lecture, we will learn about the Coulomb's law and its effect. Thank you very much.